How do we determine the age of a rock, a shell, or a meteorite? Radiometric dating. First step, we need to identify a radioactive parent material that is present in our rock and that decays into daughter material at a rate that ensures enough of both parent and daughter in the rock to measure them. There are a number of parent-daughter radioactive decay pairs, and each pair has a different decay rate known as a half-life. Half-life is the amount of time it takes for one half of the original parent radioactive material to decay into daughter product. For example, carbon-14 decays to nitrogen-14 with a half-life of 5,700 years. The numbers, 14, indicate a particular isotope of these atoms. For example, all atoms with six protons are carbon atoms. All nitrogen atoms have seven protons. However, each atom can have varying amounts of neutrons, and we call all those permutations, the same atom but different numbers of neutrons, isotopes. Carbon-14 is a carbon isotope with six protons and eight neutrons, total 14. Carbon-12 is a carbon isotope with six protons and six neutrons, total 12. Carbon-13 is a carbon isotope with six protons and seven neutrons, total 13. Pause now. Any naturally occurring substance with carbon in it will have about 99% carbon-12, 1.1% carbon-13, and some trace amounts of the radioactive carbon-14 isotopes. What makes carbon-14 and nitrogen-14 a very good isotope pair is that most substances that contain carbon in a structure, such as shells made of calcium carbonate, do not also have nitrogen in them. So any nitrogen-14 we see in the material will have come from the decay process. For carbon-14, every 5,700 years, half of the original carbon-14 has decayed to nitrogen-14. After one half-life, assuming there was no nitrogen-14 to begin with in a rock sample, the ratio of the two should be one to one, equal. After two half-lives, the half that remained of parent after the first half-life is now halved again. Half of a half is a quarter. The remaining three quarters is daughter, and the ratio of parent to daughter is one to three. Another half-life, and we have the quarter. There's now one-eighth parent, and seven-eighths daughter, and the ratio is one to seven, and so on. At this point, three half-lives have passed, and the time is 5,700 times three, or 17,100 years. A shell that was buried 17,100 years ago would have a carbon-14, nitrogen-14 ratio of 1 to 7. If we are trying to use the carbon-14, nitrogen-14 radioactive decay pair to date a rock that's 100 million years old, there likely will not be enough parent left to measure, and that would not be a good choice. Pause now. In addition to the carbon-14, nitrogen-14 pair being useful only for relatively young rocks, this pair is also useful only if there is carbon in the rock, and specifically carbon that was present in a living organism at some point on Earth's surface. While one half of all meteorites do contain some carbon, they fail on the other two requirements, and so we need to identify another radioactive decay pair to date meteorites. Fortunately, there are a number of other pairs, such as uranium-238, which decays to lead-206, and has a half-life of 4.5 billion years. Uranium-235, which decays to lead-207, and has a half-life of 700 million years. Potassium-40, which decays to argon-40, and has a half-life of 1.4 billion years. Second step. We need to ensure the rock or shell or bone fragment has remained a closed system. While parent decays into daughter, there must be no migration of parent or daughter isotopes into or out of the rock. Otherwise, the ratios we see do not reflect decay over the lifetime of the rock. For example, if a rock has undergone extensive metamorphism at high heats, atoms become mobile within the rock and can migrate in and out. Similarly, if a rock undergoes chemical weathering on its surface, minerals can break down and atoms can migrate in and out. 
Pause now. So how do we date a meteorite? First, we ensure it was a closed system by picking a good sample without any weathering or evidence of melting. Then we place a sample of it in a mass spectrometer to measure the ratio of the particular radioactive decay pair we're studying. In this case, uranium-238 and lead-206. When asteroids first coalesce, they contain plenty of uranium-238, but no lead-206. The only way to produce lead-206 is as a radioactive decay daughter product of uranium-238. Every 4.5 billion years, one half of uranium-238 will decay into lead-206. So if we open a closed system asteroid that formed 4.6 billion years ago, with no lead-206 at that time, and no loss or gain from or to the outside world since, we can use the ratio of the parent and daughter within to determine how long decay has been happening or how old the meteorite is. And what do we find? Almost exactly equal amounts of uranium-238 to lead-206. That ratio of 1 to 1 is possible only if exactly one half-life has passed. The meteorite formed about 4.5 billion years ago. Of course, in the lab we get a lot more precise. What if we used uranium-235 and lead-207 to date the same meteorite? What would we find as our ratio? Remember, the half-life for uranium-235 to lead-207 is 700 million years. For something that is 4.6 billion years old, that means it would have passed through 6.7 half-lives. Let's look at what that means for the ratio. One half-life gives a ratio of one-half parent to one-half daughter, or one to one. Two half-lives have the parent again, so we have a ratio of a quarter parent to three-quarters daughter, or one to three. Three half-lives, one-eighth to seven-eighths, or one to seven. Four half-lives, one-sixteenth to fifteen-sixteenths, or one to fifteen. Five half-lives, one-thirty-second to thirty-one-thirty-seconds, or one to thirty-one. Six half-lives, one over sixty-four to sixty-three over sixty-four, or a ratio of one to sixty-three. And seven half-lives is one over a hundred and twenty-eight parent to one hundred and twenty-seven one hundred and twenty-eighths daughter, or one to one hundred and twenty-seven. So the ratio we'd expect for something that had experienced 6.7 half-lives is somewhere close to 1 to 127, close to 7 half-lives. To be more precise, we use this equation. The fraction of parent remaining equals e to the power of minus t divided by 1.443, where t is the number of half-lives passed. Since t is 6.7, that means the fraction of parent remaining is 0 0.00963. The remaining 0 0.99037 must be daughter, and the ratio is 1 to 103. Calculating age using multiple radioactive isotope pairs is a method we use to confirm our dates. Pause now. For more information and more detail, continue on to the next video in this series. Mm -hmm.